Hello everyone. Welcome to Chemizon Complete Chemistry. In today's video, we are going to discuss some of the questions that were asked in the GATE 2023 chemistry paper that was held yesterday. So let us start with the first question. Which partition function is directly proportional to volume? Now for this, you must know the formula of all the four partition functions and the correct answer for this is going to be translational partition function. What is the formula for a translational partition function? Q is the partition function. Translational is equal to root of 2 pi m kbt by h into length. Let's say we are studying the x direction. Then length will be lx. This is we can say for a 1D box. But if I want to study for a 3D box, what I will do? I will take the cube. I will take the cube of this. So Q trans is equal to, if we take the entire cube, what will, what will be the case? This will be LX. LX the whole cube into root of 2 pi m kbt by h. This also will be raised to 3. Now here you can see Lx cube. This is what? This is volume. How do you define volume of a box? It is side cube. Okay, if it is a cube, we say side cube. And the if the dimensions are different, we say length into breadth into height. So what is the correct answer here? Correct answer will be option C that is translational partition function is directly proportional to volume. Let us see the next question now. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, this is very important. You have to check whether incorrect or correct statement is asked. Okay, let us see one by one all the options. Here if you see, if you have not read this word incorrect, the first statement that is total angular momentum is the sum of orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. This is the correct statement. So if you have not read whether it is correct or incorrect statement is asked, you might have marked the first option as correct. Okay, this was which type of question? This was MCQ, which means only one option is the appropriate option. So first statement is correct. So this will not be correct, not be the correct option because incorrect option is asked. Second one, wave function of B3 plus cannot be solved. Now what is B3 plus? B, what is atomic number? Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Atomic number is 4, so electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. Now we have to write down for B3 plus. B3 plus means we have to remove, 3 plus means we have to remove 3 electron. 2 electrons we remove from 2s, 1 electron I remove from 1s. So what we will get? 1s1. This is what? This is same as that of the electronic configuration of hydrogen or 1H. And we know for 1H we can easily solve and that's why we study the hydrogen atom. And we know that the psi or wave function for hydrogen atom can be solved. So this is the incorrect statement. Okay, and that, that is going to be the correct option. So correct answer here is option B. Let us also see the option C and D. Ground state energy for a harmonic oscillator is H nu by 2. Now what is the formula for energy? We can say vibrational energy is what? It is V plus half H nu. What is V here? V is vibrational quantum number. Vibrational quantum number. Now if I want to find out for the ground state, I can write it as E vibrational. 0. 0 means ground state. For ground state, what will be the value of vibrational quantum number? It is going to be 0. So 0 plus half h nu. That is going to be h nu by 2. So this statement is also correct. Okay, so this is not the correct option. Last one, if we see energy for a rigid rotor is inversely proportional to moment of inertia. Okay, let us first write down the formula for energy. Uh, for a rigid rotor that is rotational energy is what what is the formula h square upon 8 pi square i j into j plus 1 
we can write it as b j into j plus 1. Okay, b is what? b is the rotational constant and this value is in what? It is in joules. So here we can see energy for a rotational, a rotational energy or energy for a rigid rotor is what it is inversely proportional to i. i is what? i is the moment of inertia. Okay, so you can see this option is also what? This is also correct statement. Okay, so this is not the correct option. Now, next question, metal ion having least reactivity to form this complex. Now, how this complex will be formed? M, E, N. What is E, N? E, N is ethylene diamine. NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. Okay, so how will the basic structure look like? This is the octahedral complex because the N is what? It is a bidentate complex. Two nitrogen atom can donate its lone pair to the central metal atom at the same time. So it can be like this, En. Okay, this is going to be the structure. And what is going to be the correct answer? Correct answer was Cu. If you see En, En is what? It is a neutral ligand. So if I want to find out the oxidation state of metal, it will be MEN thrice 2 plus, let's say this is X, plus 3 into En is a neutral ligand, so 0 is equal to plus 2. So X plus 0 is equal to plus 2. So oxidation state is plus 2. Now copper plus 2, if I write down the oxidation state, it is going to be, first let us write down for copper, it is going to be argon. 3D10, 4S1. If I write down for Cu2+, plus, I have to remove two electrons. One from 4S, one from D. So it will be AR, 3D9, 4S0. So 3D9, let us write down the electronic configuration for 3D9. Okay, octahedral complex splits into two levels, lower energy T2G and higher energy EG level. And what we have to fill? We have to fill D9. En is a strong ligand, but in D9, it does not matter whether ligand is strong or weak. Electron configuration will be same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now here you can see this EG orbital is unsymmetrically filled. Here there is one only one electron. Here there is two electrons. So we say that the EG level is unsymmetrically filled. Okay, and we know whenever the EG level is unsymmetrically filled, what occurs? This will undergo JTD or we say it is called as John Teller distortion. John Teller distortion. So here what will happen? Z out complex is formed. That is, we can also call it as tetragonally elongated complex are formed. So for, so for copper, if I want to draw this complex, how would it look like? For copper, it will be copper. Axial bonds are very long. And the equatorial bonds are shorter. So if I draw, you can see this ring that is formed between the ethylene diamine and copper. Because of this long axial bonds, it is there is strain in the system. So that is why the reactive will be, reactivity will be least. So what is the correct answer for this question? It is going to be copper. That is here it was which ion? Copper 2 plus ion will be least stable and hence it will be least reactive. Now this, this is a match the following question. These are the what? These are what? These are the mathematical functions that are used in quantum. Okay, for different systems, mathematical functions are used. So this was a very straightforward question. If you know the answer, if you have studied in depth, then only you can answer this question. Or else what you could have done, you, can, you could have skipped this question. So Lagore polynomial is used in what? It is used to solve the radial part, radial part of the hydrogen atom. 
Hermite polynomial is used for harmonic oscillator. Next is legendary polynomial. This is used to solve the angular part of the hydrogen atom. And last one is trigonometric function is used for particle in a box model. Okay, so what, what is the formula for particle in a box? We know psi is equal to root of 2 by L sin n pi x by L. The sign is what here? It is a trigonometric function. Now in this question also, what they had done is that frame the question very carefully that everybody knows what they know is the harmonic oscillator. We use hermite polynomial. Particle in a box, we use trigonometric functions. So there were two options if you have looked carefully where these two were same. So what was the main purpose of this question is whether they wanted to check whether you know which mathematical function is used for radial and angular part. So these were the uh, correct options. Now let us see the next question. This was a very simple question. Packing fraction of volume occupied by body centered cubic unit cell is how much? So what was the correct option? 68% or 68. So let us write down the packing fractions for all the all the unit cells. Cu simple cubic it is how much? 52%. Body centered cubic it is 68% which was asked. Face centered cubic is 74% and hexagonal close packing it is again 74% that is same as that of the face centered cubic. So here the correct answer was what? It was 68. Now let us see this question. Point group of naphthalene is. Now first if you see what you can do. This is let's say in one plane. Naphthalene molecule is in one plane. And before writing down the symmetry elements. First you have to understand that all these pi electrons are in conjugation. Okay, so you cannot say that this ring is different from this ring. Okay, to avoid confusion, what you can do, you can represent like this. Both are similar. Okay, now we can draw the symmetry elements. One symmetry element will be from the top. Okay, from the top, if I pass an axis and rotate it by 180 degree, I will get the same configuration. That is, one C2 is present. So I will write C. Now, if you see in plane, if I pass this axis, this is 1C2, which is perpendicular to the principal axis. This is, we can call it as the principal axis. 1C2 is this that is present. And there will be one more C2 that will be passing like this. If you rotate the molecule like this, you will get the same configuration. So whenever there are two C2s that is perpendicular, what is the meaning of perpendicular at the at 90 degree to the principal axis here principal axis is also c2 then what we do when the two axes are perpendicular we change c to d and since it is 2 so we write d2 and now if you see for this molecule this plane that i have drawn okay all the atoms are in same plane why because all the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized we know it is a aromatic compound and it is planar so all the atoms are sp2 hybridized so if i pass this plane this is what this is going to be the molecular plane and it is perpendicular to the principal axis so we call, what do we call such a plane that is perpendicular to the molecular axis that is called as the horizontal plane A horizontal plane is present in this molecule that is what we call it as we call it as sigma h so d2 and then we add what we add h and across c2 there will be sigma v as well sigma v is what vertical plane of symmetry okay so what will be the point group for this question the correct answer will be d2 h the correct answer will be the point group of naphthalene is D2H.
I hope you have understood all these questions. We will continue the video further and we will solve some more questions. Thank you so much.